All right, so we're going to do problem number two from the homework. And it says, a ball initially at rest rolls down a hill with an acceleration of 3.3 meters per second squared. And then it has two parts to it. A, if it accelerates for 7.5 seconds, how far will it move? And B, how far would it have moved if it had started at 4 meters per second rather than from rest? Let's go ahead and do that problem, and let's start by diagramming what that looks like. So here's our hill, here's the ball, and it's going to roll down the hill. And we know that the acceleration is 3.3 meters per second squared. Then part A asks us to find if it accelerates for 7.5 seconds, so I know the time is 7.5 seconds, how far or what's the distance that will move down the hill? Okay, so we only have one other piece of information and that, that was that this object was at rest when it started. So we know that the initial velocity is zero meters per second. So now we have an acceleration, we have an initial velocity, we have a time, we have a distance. So what we can do now is we can say that the distance is equal to the initial velocity times the time plus one half at squared. Because our initial velocity is zero meters per second, that means when we put the initial velocity of zero times time, that's going to go away and we're going to be just left with distance equals one half at squared. So we'll have one half times 3.3 meters per second squared times 7.5 seconds squared. All right, continuing through. And 7.5 squared is 56.25. And the seconds are squared. So when we multiply through, we have seconds on the bottom, which cancel with the seconds on the top. And we'll get an answer of 0.5 times 3.3 times 56.25. We get 92.8. And my only unit left is meters. And the question was to find the distance. So our units worked out, and that's correct. And if we're keeping significant digits, we were given... 3.3 is an acceleration. We were giving 7.5 as the time. We could assume the zero from rest is infinite. So we can really keep two significant digits. So if you're doing significant digits on this, that's 93 meters. Okay. And then part two says, what if it had started at an initial velocity of four meters per second? So in part B, We've got an initial velocity of four meters per second. Everything else is going to remain the same. The time is still 7.5 seconds. The acceleration is still 3.3 meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and put in distance is equal to the initial velocity times the time plus one half at squared. Now, if you'll notice, Nothing changed on this term. All of this work that we already did is going to be the same down here. So when I go to do this, I'm going to shortcut this, and I'm just going to put in my 92.8 meters. So plugging in the numbers, distance is equal to the initial velocity, which now is 4 meters per second, times 7.5 seconds. And I'm going to shortcut this, and I'm going to put my 92.8 meters because none of that work changed. Okay, four point, I'm sorry, just four times 7.5 gives me 30 seconds cancel because they're top and bottom, that's 30 meters plus 92.8 meters. And I'm sorry, this was 4.0 meters per second because we're gonna keep our significant digits on this. So that's gonna give me 30, plus 92.8 gives me 122.8.
meters. So if you had that, that would be fine. But if we're going to follow significant digits rules, this has two, this has two, this has two. Our final answer can only have two. So we keep these two to the left. One, a two. That two didn't round that up. So we just get 120 meters if you're doing significant digits. And that's number two.